Misko Heavery is one of the brightest people I've ever met in my life. And I had the honor and privilege of meeting with him at JS Nation and sitting down for an interview with him to talk about Quick. Misko is not just the author of Quick, but also of Angular and AngularJS. This person has created three outstanding frameworks in his lifetime. It is amazing. So let's hear more about Quick and how it compares to Next and React. Let's get right into it. Mishko, nice to meet you. Jack. How's it going, John? How are you nice doing? You. Finally get to see you in person. Right, exactly, exactly. So, okay, so you're here on talking about Quick? Yes. Right, okay. So we had a great conversation with some of the next folks about RSCs and Quick. And you know, why don't you give me like the quick rundown? Well, sorry, joke. <laughs> <laughs> the rundown. That happens right? a lot. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's a great name. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And it's good, too, because you got QW, which is good, because... You can Google it, and it's great. Yes. Um, so why is Quick going to outperform RSCs? Well, fundamentally, you just have to do less work. Yeah. Right? And um, the, the point of reasonable mobility is that you have to download less HTML. You have to download less JavaScript. You have to execute less JavaScript. Right? And so if in all of those categories, you have less things to download, less things to do, less things to, to process, well, you're going to be faster in the end, right? It's not because somehow the algorithm is more efficient or whatever. It's just you have fundamentally less things to do, and so that's why you win. Makes sense. So for those who don't know, so Quick's alternative to the React hydration model mm -hmm. is resumability. Correct. And the fundamental aspect of that is what? Right. So why do we do hydration? Let's start over there, right? Yeah, good question. And so fundamentally the problem we're trying to solve is they want to make the page interactive. Right. Right. And so, so you rendered the page. You rendered the page on a server, you do right. the SSR. Right. You sent HTML over, right. but the HTML has insufficient amount of information about like what does it mean to be interactive. Right, right, yeah. And so you have to kind of recover that information somehow. And the way you recover that is you take the application, you go into the root component. And then you recursively visit all the components and say like, hey, do you have a listener? If so, give it to me so that I can attach it to the DOM and make the page interactive. Yeah, exactly. And so that's fundamentally what hydration is. Right. But if you think about it, what's happening is you're running the code twice. Yeah. You ran it once on a server, right, to kind of figure out how to render the page. Yeah. And you got the listeners at the yeah. server. You just happened to throw them out because right. you didn't know what to do with them. And now you're on a client and you're like, gee, I really wish I could have those listeners that I had on a server. And so how do I get them back? And the way you get it back is that you rerun everything. And this is why I call the existing frameworks replayable, right? Because you're replaying everything that you did just so you can recover the listeners. And it's not just listeners, right? You need listeners. That's kind of the most obvious ones. But the listeners close over the state of the application. And so you also have to be able to recover a state of the application. Right. And when All I say- All the data that you built, you used to build yeah, the page. But it's not just the state, right? Because if you think about it, your application doesn't refer to the state directly. It refers to a closure like set state, right? And so it's really the closure that you care about, not necessarily the state that's inside of it. I mean, you want the state inside of it too, right. but it's the closure that you want to recover for the listener. And then the last bit you want to recover is where the component boundaries. Like for the framework to be able to do stuff, it needs to know where the components begin and where the components end. And of course, where the listener should be attached yeah. to the DOM. And so to recover all this information, the framework basically reruns everything that was already happening on a server. Yeah. Okay. So I think people are going to argue, hey, I, I built my RSEs. Everything is going to happen on the server, or at least all the non-interactive stuff is going to happen on the server. If, it, if there are no event handlers to go over, then shouldn't those two things be just as fast? Like, what, what, What's the flaw in RSEs that's fixed? in the quick model, yeah. even though the quick model is geared more towards fast interaction? And that's a good question. That's, it's like an obvious question that people ask. So the way RSCs work is they, um, it's still a React application, which means when a React application runs, it generates JSX, right? right. And so JSX generates the VDOM. Right. And so in the case of React server components, the components that are uh, from the server, the VDOM gets serialized into JSON. Right. And that VDOM actually gets included inside of your HTML. Yeah, right? that's, why the big, that's why the next JS New pages with the app writer are so much that's right. bigger that's right. than the older pages, yeah. So when you uh, open a React Server Component page, right, you get the uh, JS, uh, the, the, J, uh, the, the VDOM from the server, and React has to do hydration. And so the way it starts doing hydration is it starts in the root of the app, 
which happens to be that big serialized chunk, right? <laughs> yeah. And so now it goes and verifies that the VDOM actually matches the HTML, which if you can think about it, is kind of useless work because like I it's know. all static. Yeah, right. And yet people get these hydration errors, like, oh, this doesn't match that. And like, where that's does that right. come from? That's right. Yeah, so, yeah. That, but that's... there's another way of looking at it, which is that React just sent you everything twice. Right. Once in the form of HTML, and once in the form of JSON that basically has the same exact information as the HTML. Right. And so Quick just sends it down the HTML, but there's some additional components on, on the each tag that is interactive that basically says, hey, when I, when I need to be interactive, here's the JavaScript that I need to actually make that happen. Yeah. And only at that point where you actually click the button do we actually grab that, that, that JavaScript. So um, Quick does a couple of things differently. And, and one is that, you know, how do you recover the state of the system? So what Quick does is it serializes that information into the HTML. And different parts of the information end up in the HTML in a different way. So the state of the system ends up, ends up in the JSON. The listeners end up as extra attributes on your components. And the component boundaries end up as extra tech, uh, not text node, common nodes uh, inside of the HTML. And all of that information allows basically Quick to start executing the application from anywhere. Right? Existing frameworks have to start executing at the root because that's the only entry point and that's the root component and from there they can kind of um, traverse the, the, the leaves of children to kind of figure out the world. But Quick has this property that it can start from anywhere and it can stop anywhere as well. And so for Quick, it doesn't have to go to the root component and kind of figure everything out, but instead it can go to any component and say, I just need to re-render that right, bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. just as well. And to do that, it, the Quick actually flips the whole model upside down. Instead of saying that the root component is the way you enter the system, Quick says, no, 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 it's the listeners how you enter the system. So if your app has no listeners, if you have no click listeners or mouse moves or anything like that, there are no entry points into a Quick application because fundamentally you have a static page. Right, yeah. right? You have nothing in there. So if you have a, a truly static page, it's That's full right. on zero JS. That's right, it's full on zero nice. JS. And if you create interactivity on the page, let's say a click listener, then the click listener becomes the entry point. Right. And instead of having the tree shaker say like, here's a root component and try to tree shake stuff away with, you go to the, comp the listener and say, here's the listener, and tree shake away from there. And so the, the tree shaker says like, okay, here's a listener, what does the listener need? And the listener might close over the component internal state, so I'm going to need to bring that in, right. or it might co close over the component itself, but usually the, the blast radius, so to speak, to the damage <laughs> of the thing is very limited. Well, right? the size of the island. I mean, basically what you're saying say almost is island. essentially, but, well, I mean, you're basically saying, okay, this, this thing is an implicit island because I've added some interactivity to it, and therefore it just you know, grabs all yeah, that. Yeah, so, so the word island has different meaning to different people. Okay. So if you look at it from the Astro point of view, an island is a mini application that right. is a whole tree of things, right? Yeah. In, if you want to call Quick an island, then you have to redefine the word island because the island just means a, a closure that basically has the dollar sign. A dollar sign is the thing that does the code extraction in our, in our world, and to us, an island is a closure, okay. which may be as little as- Just a button. Just a yeah. listener. Yeah, right. Or maybe a component. But maybe it's, for example, use effect. We don't call it use effect, we call it use uh, task or use visible task, but it might be as little as that piece of code, right. right? So when you talk about islands, like it's a natural word to use, but you have to keep in mind that it means very, very different than what it means in Astro. Right, as an Astro developer, I would I necessarily have to think, and I actually have to annotate things. I have to say yes. this is gonna load on the client, this is gonna load on you know the server and the client. Whereas in Quick, it's just, I just made this interactive, it just yes. happened. Like but the just, nice thing is you, you don't go. have to annotate anything. The system right. kind of naturally figures this out. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so you can, uh, like for example, React server components have the restriction that if you're on the server side, you cannot use use state or a right. click listener, or you cannot create a callback and then pass it to a client component. That doesn't work either, right? I think you can pass a server action, but that's a different sort of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it gets complicated, right? <laughs> it does. And so Very the fast. nice thing about Quick is that you don't have any restrictions. Any component can be anything. And then when you kind of flip it upside down and say, okay, now I'm going to look at it from the point of the events, and I'm going to see, starting at this event, what else do I need to pull in? You realize that you get end up serializing a lot less. Not only do we tree shake unneeded code, we also tree shake unneeded state. 
So if a particular state doesn't have a listener that closes over that state, then that state oh, is yeah. automatically thrown right. away. Right, right, okay, exactly. So if you have, if you have components where you only, you're only server rendering a certain, a certain set of state, and then this other state, like for example, like a product, mm -hmm. you do a product detail page, right? The product image may be static, and the, but it's all part of the product you know, object, mm -hmm. right? And so what you're saying is, okay, the product price, which is I'm going to need to add to cart dynamically on the client, I'm going to go and grab that piece mm -hmm. and serialize that, but I'm not going to go and grab the rest of it? That's right. That's right. So, That's nice. Um, you know, we have a get static props on, on Next, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, a get static props would well, give you uh, now, the product well, before. Whatever. Before, right. <laughs> whatever the new one is, yeah. Yes. But you would have to serialize that data, right? So, yeah. the, the data, it's serialized because fundamentally Next can't tell, I mean, not that Next It doesn't tell. know. It has it, no idea. It like, needs it. No, no. Yeah. It needs it as part of hydration, right? Yes. Because, because as part of hydration, the you're rerunning the whole thing, yeah. right? So because we don't do hydration, we don't need it. And yeah. then the system kind of realizes like, not only do we not need it as part of hydration because we don't do that, but actually there isn't any click or any kind of interaction that the user can do that would modify the state. Right, so it's just done. You and therefore, it's there it's, you, you can throw it away. Oh, that's cool. So it's a kind of like a mark and sweep compiler, except that your roots are the listeners. Cool. Okay, so kind of button this all up. So we think about the different Meta frameworks, Next.js, Remix, you know, whatever, Solid Start, and what they're good and useful for in terms of applications. Mm -hmm. Are there applications that you, application types that you think are ideally more suited to Quick than other application types, or you think it's just great, great for everything? I think it's a general purpose framework, like sure. Angular yeah. or React, et cetera. And you can build any kind of applications that you want, for example, with React. But there is a kind of a trade-off that you have that if, if you're building a static app, the hydration is really going to kind of the cost of hydration yeah, is going to get right. you, right? Yeah. And so there's alternatives like Astro, right, for that. But then if you're building a full-on client-side, super complex, rich application, then you end up with, um, but the problem is that the initial bundle size tends to be very large. <laughs> right. right, but and you can't so do anything much about I mean, at the end of the day, there like, is if they limited need that things, JavaScript on the client. There's yeah. limited things you can do, right? Yeah. And so you can use Quick to build any of these things. But the nice thing is that Quick out of the box, without any sort of effort, has this ability to tree shake and lazy load not just the data but also the behavior and everything else to go with it, right? So I think Quick is actually n a natural fit for both extremes. It's extreme. It's good for like if you have completely static content, you know, you'll get no JavaScript. And as you, your application gets super complicated and super large, Quick actually starts shining over there even more, because the more complicated the page gets, the more important it becomes to be able to do lazy loading yes. and, and do the right. You right. know, just delay. You want, that, as, and you, yeah. you want that really good time to interactive. You want to go do good time to interactive, and you know, a lot of people actually asked about that, and they say like, "Oh, does it mean that every time I click, I'm going to fetch code, right?" And so we have a service worker for that, so that the code gets fetched eagerly, okay, placed in the cache, and it's waiting in the cache. But the execution of the code is lazy, so it's only when you interact that you actually get it from the cache and put it inside of the the, the V8, right, the virtual machine. That is lazy, but the loading into the cache is eager. Cool, nice. How do I get started with Quick? Uh, NPM, create, quick, at latest. Amazing. All right. Thank you, man. That Thank was you. wonderful. Wow. Misco is amazing. And if you haven't tried out Quick yet, you really should. It is a fantastic framework. Whether you use it in production or not, it is just a new way of thinking about how we build web applications. And of course, I want to say thank you to the folks at JS Nation and React Summit for sending me out to Amsterdam. It was a fantastic experience. And if you want to have a similar type of experience, you should check out React Advanced in London coming up, and also the React Summit in New York. I'm really looking forward to both of those. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see me there. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, please hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you click on that subscribe button and hit that bell, you'll be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out.